going on, everyone? So the Phoenix Suns appear that they have worked it out. So the Phoenix Suns are currently on a five-game winning streak after beating the Indiana Pacers. Um, they've won seven out of the last ten. And, I mean, if you want to extend it into December, they've won ten out of the last 13 games. And now we're sitting six games over 500. Um, They currently have a record of 24 and 18. Uh, They are tied for the sixth seed uh, right behind the Dallas Mavericks. Dallas currently has a tiebreaker, but they're right there, right? And they're only half a game out of the fifth seed. And they seem to be clicking. Now, a couple ways you could look at this is you could look at it as how have they, who have they beaten and how have they beaten them, right? Like, you look at some of these games, like the Indiana Pacers, yes, they spoiled Siakam's debut, but no Halliburton, right? Pelicans, they beat the Kings, very noticeable. They beat the Blazers, and then they finally beat the Lakers, uh, who the Lakers had their number the previous three times. But then they lost to the Clippers, they lost to the Grizzlies, they beat the Miami Heat, they lost to the Clippers again, they beat the Portland Trail Blazers, and then before that... Their three wins were the Hawks, the Hornets, and the Magic. So it kind of depends on how you want to look at it. You could look at it as like, you know, yeah, they've won 10 out of the last 13, but who have they played? The only good teams that they've played or the only real like potential contending teams that they've played are the Clippers, and they lost to them both times, which is a fair argument, is a fair assessment. Now, look, I personally, this is just me, not super sold on the Phoenix Suns still, right? They're playing good basketball, right? Bradley Beal, Devin Booker, Kevin Durant, their big three are a offensive nightmare, right? And if you're an opposing defense, you got to try to figure out and contain that, <laughs> that just three-headed monster. And that's not easy to do, right? You're talking about two of the best scorers in the league in Kevin Durant and Devin Booker, and then Bradley Beal isn't that far behind. Right. And they still, though, however, I have my reservation. So mainly their depth. Right. Can and will they have enough to kind of make up for the moments in which they their big three are not in the games? Right. Grayson Allen's been good for them. Right. Um, you know, you, you they have a couple nice pieces, nothing in my opinion that's like super noteworthy, right? It's like, who who do they have that they can rely on besides Booker, Beal, and, and uh, Durant, right? Nurkic, he's kind of hit or miss at times. Eric Gordon, he thinks he's a superstar, but more times than not doesn't show up, right? Akogi, great defensively, doesn't really provide much on the offensive end. Said so Grayson Allen is probably the only guy on the offensive side of things that you can rely on on a consistent basis. That's a big issue defensively, right? They're still not a very good defensive team, right? They're still not a team that I trust to go and just completely games on the line, tie game down the stretch, be able to get a key stop, right? I just feel more times than not they're going to give up points. They're going to give up. Um, the the opportunity to to finish game. They're they're looking to outscore you essentially. And I mean, you look at their the stretch, right? So in their five game win streak, they scored 117, 123, 119, 127, 127. Their two losses, they gave up 138 to the Clippers and only scored 111. Then gave up 121 to the Grizzlies, only scored 115. Right. The Clippers, again, they lose to them again. Give up 131 points. They scored 122, right? But you look at their uh, their other wins. 129 against the Rockets, 133 against the Hornets, right? They're looking to basically just get to 125 points, blow you out, call it a day. That's what they're looking to do. And I just don't know come playoff time if they'll be able to score enough and be enough consistently. And look, I understand that they have that big three, 
But again, who else outside of the, are those two? Are those three going to score 115 a game? No. And that's not counting if one of them has a bad game, and there's still clunkiness at times, right? Them and and the playmaking, they still need a true playmaker, in my opinion. And then you add in the fact health, right? Which has been a big issue, which is in their defense, which we're gonna we're gonna switch to the other side here in a moment. But I wanted to just get out my I don't believe in the Suns first before we really, you know, kind of get get rid of the bad before I, I jump into the good, right? But Health is a big thing, right? They, particularly Bradley Beal, because Bradley Beal has been the least healthy out of everybody. But if they lose one of these guys again, that could spell big trouble because I don't know if they're going to be able to to do what they need to do to, to weather the storm. We've seen what they look like when they have injuries. Lastly, the fourth quarter. They're still not a very good fourth quarter team. They've been one of the worst teams in the league this year in the fourth quarter. And so the question is, can they turn those things around? Now, the good side. The more health, again, if they can stay healthy, Bradley Beal is playing, but the more healthy they get, the better they should be because they'll have more time to figure it out, you know, they're they're right now playmaking by committee, which is good, right? You want to see them be able to uh, kind of share the basketball. Don't get too stuck on isolation, right? Which they can at times. But when the ball's flowing, things are moving for the Phoenix Suns, good things tend to happen, right? And you looked at them, they had 25 assists uh, against the Indiana Pacers, for example, right? sharing the basketball, moving the basketball. If they're in the high 20s, then they're going to be in good shape and they're going to win a lot of games, right? Because they do have scoring threats and they do and can cause many problems. Look at the Pelicans game, 32 assists, right? Guys are sharing, guys are moving, guys are cooking. You kind of have Bradley Beal and Devin Booker operating as your playmakers. Um, Although... Oddly enough, Kevin Durant should probably be that guy because Kevin Durant has actually been excellent in like the pick and rolls, the pick and pops, uh, just kind of being that extender uh, in, in, in the playmaking role. But it's nice when you have basically not only a three-headed monster offensively, but three guys that can make plays for others, three guys that can help with the versatility. Right? Opposing teams still have to match up and stop. As much as I have said that Phoenix... I don't trust their defense and I don't rely. I don't believe that their defense is enough to get stops and do what they need to do. In the same breath, other teams have to be able to stop them. And they have three of the best scorers in the league. Right? You're talking like there's very few guys in this league that can score at such as as high of a elite level as Bradley Beal, Devin Booker, and Kevin Durant. Especially Devin Booker and Kevin Durant. I mean Kevin Durant's still top 10, right? At worst, top 15. Same thing with Devin Booker. Devin Booker's maybe 15 to 20 somewhere in that ballpark, depending on where you have him. Bradley Beal, I'd kind of put more in like the 25 to 30 range. Although when he's when he's healthy and he's cooking, that dude is on. And so they're going to be a threat. You're going to have to beat the Phoenix Suns, Right? You're not just going to run through the Phoenix Suns. You're going to have to beat them. And again, we'll look at the Indiana Pacers game because that's the most recent game. You you look at those three. Kevin Durant had 40 points. Bradley Beal had 25. Devin Booker had 26. (laughs) Right, And Devin Booker had a bad game. He was 9-24 from the field and 1-7 from three. Bradley Beal, 11-16. He was great. Kevin Durant, obviously, 18-25. of So, I mean, they gave you 91 points between the three of them. They also gave you 13 assists when, as I mentioned, they had 25. So they accounted for like 80% of their offense and like 60% of their assist total 
if they can maintain that and they can continue to do that, then I think they'll be okay. I'd still like them to go try to find a playmaker. I'd still like them to go find, like, it doesn't even have to be anyone great, right? Just somebody that can just deliver the basketball, right? Like a Tyus Jones, I think, would be perfect on this team, right? But again, like, the the luxury that the Suns have is on any given night, Bradley Beal, Devin Booker, or Kevin Durant could go off for 40 or, 40 or 50, right? So look at the Pelicans game again. Got Devin Booker, 52 points. Kevin Durant follows through with 26 points. Bradley Beal followed through with 13 points. But he was 50%, 6-12 from the field. Again, they gave you, what, 91 points again? So they, they are, offensively, I don't have much of a concern. And... The other big question is just being a jump shooting team. Are they going to be able to handle the playoffs, right? Usually jump shooting teams don't go very far. And how are they going to handle like the physicality of like a Minnesota in the playoffs or, you know, a Denver or even if they were to play the Lakers, right? The Lakers, yes, they lost the most recent matchup against them. Uh, against the big three, they beat them three other times, but they have size and they'll be physical and come playoff time. You're going to have to deal with Anthony Davis and LeBron James. Like, how are they going to be able to deal with that when LeBron James and Anthony Davis are basically going to get whatever they want inside and at the rim all game long and you're reliant on your jump shooting and you have to stop them and slow them down. And unless you are just hot for four games, right? It becomes a concern, is my is my point. But again, you're gonna have to beat these guys. It's not gonna be easy. Not gonna be easy at all. But I don't know. I I, I like I give gotta give them credit, right? Again, to win 10 out of 13 regardless. I don't care if you're playing the Spurs 13 times, right? Or or the the Detroit Pistons. You could play the Detroit Pistons 13 times. I don't care who it is. Still the NBA, still could lose on any given night, right? If they can stay healthy, they're only going to get better. They're only going to get more reps. They're only going to get better understanding of each other. They're only going to figure it out more. So they should come playoffs, if they can maintain and stay healthy, only get that much better. And they're going to be terrifying. So I... I definitely think that we're seeing some great things from the Phoenix Suns. I still have my reservations. I personally wouldn't pick them to win a championship this year, but I don't think anyone would be surprised, including myself, if they did. They absolutely have as good of a chance as anybody the way that they're playing right now. So credit where credit is due. I explain my good. I explain my bad. As always, I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? Do you agree with my points? Do you disagree with my points? Do you feel the same way? Do you feel some way different? Do you think Phoenix is winning the chip? Do you think that they're not? However you feel, whatever your thoughts are, I would love to hear it. So let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me a lot. Let's me enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. If you're not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.